In this video, we're going to cover Neo Geo Pocket emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. The Neo Geo Pocket Color is a very interesting handheld and one I have enjoyed getting to know over the last couple of years. I don't have the most games for it, but it's a lot of fun. I'm also glad that it is so easily emulated on different systems like the Xbox Series X and S. And I'm going to show you how to get that set up today, so let's dive in. Now the first thing we need to get Neo Geo Pocket and Pocket Color games up and running on our Xbox Series X and S is to install RetroArch. I have a guide on the channel on how to do so if you haven't done it already. Next we need to source some Neo Geo Pocket games. You could dump these from a physical collection or resort to the shady part of the net to do so. Really don't care how you do it, but don't ask me for legal download links as I will never provide them. But Neo Geo Pocket games can be in NGC files or zipped up, shouldn't matter either way. But once you have them acquired, you just need to decide if you're going to place them on the internal SSD of your Xbox or run them from USB. For my purposes, I'm going to store them on USB, so I'm just going to grab them and drag them right on over. But once you have your games placed, go ahead and switch over to the Xbox, put your USB drive in the Xbox if you're going to be using USB. And over on your Xbox, go ahead and get booted into RetroArch. Now, once RetroArch is finished loading, we can begin loading up Neo Geo Pocket games. One method to do so is to go to Load Content, navigate to the directory that you have your games stored in. If you have them on the internal SSD, they're going to be under S, Program Files, Windows Apps, RetroArch folder, your Made Games folder, find your Neo Geo Pocket Color games, select the game, select the core, tell them to run. If you're like me and running games through USB, they're going to be located under E, find your Neo Geo Pocket games folder, select a game, select the core, tell it to run. I personally don't care for this method, it's a little bit slow and I don't like navigating so many submenus, so what I'm going to do instead is make a playlist for my Neo Geo Pocket games, and to do so I go to import content and go down to manual scan. And then from here we're going to choose a content directory, so navigate to where your Neo Geo Pocket Color games are stored, whether on USB or the internal SSD. So mine are under USB, Neo Geo Pocket Games folder, scan this directory. Now for system name, press right on your D-pad to go down to the, no, SNK, this is S. So SNK, and then I'm going to choose Neo Geo Pocket Color. I have my games kind of combined in this segment, I don't really care. If you want to have them separated, you can see that you can choose that option there. Next, default core, press right on your D-pad to go down to SNK. And we are looking for Neo Geo Pocket slash color Beetle Neo Pop. Next, make sure scan recursively is on if your games are separated into subfolders. And then scan inside archives is on if you have your games zipped. Once those options are set, go ahead and start the scan. And once it's completed, you will have a new Neo Geo Pocket Color playlist here on the left. And then to play a game, all you need to do is go down to it, press A on it, and tell it to run. And there we go, we are now playing Neo Geo Pocket Color games on the Xbox Series X and S, and it's so fun. So for those of you looking to get Neo Geo Pocket Color games up and running on your Xbox Series X and S, that is the basic process to do so. Performance on Neo Geo Pocket games is fantastic, and controls feel great, at least to me. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the advanced core options available to us within the Neo Pop Core. By going into our RetroArch quick menu, we can scroll down to options. There aren't a whole lot here, so this won't take too long. First up, we have language selection. And we can choose between English and Japanese. Next, sound output sample rate. This is set to 44,100 by default, but you could crank it all the way up to a staggering 384,000 for better audio quality. Xbox can handle this just fine, so if you want to try it out, go for it. Next up, color depth. This is set to 16-bit by default, but you can change it up to a more pleasant 24-bit experience if so desired. The screen will black out for a bit on transition, but once it pops back up, you have a better color depth. And the Xbox handles that fine as well. And that really does it as far as core options within the Beetle Neopop core are concerned. Not a whole lot here. And yeah, that's, that's really it. And that's going to do it as far as Neo Geo Pocket Color Emulation is concerned on the Xbox Series X and S. Very straightforward and simple core gets you right into playing your games quickly and easily. Gotta love it. Now, as always, if you happen to have any questions about getting Neo Geo Pocket Color games up and running on your Xbox, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below, and I will do my best to try to help you out. 
But now if you could all do me just the biggest favor, be sure to hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's video. And if you haven't done so already, hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live on the channel. It goes a long way to helping us keep the place growing, and we're super grateful to all of you for that. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Little goes a long way to keeping us going and bringing more update guides to you. Just a big thank you once again for all of our current backers. Y'all have no idea how much it means to us that you support what we do here and keep us going. Rockstars champions, just thank you. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome and we will see you back next video.